Super Talk Mississippi media production. Discover the Copaya Advantage. Copaya County is a Mid-South gem with a spirit of opportunity, a business-friendly environment, and access to major transportation networks. Copaya County, let's do business. Visit copayaworks.com today and discover the Copaya Advantage. You're listening to the Rebel Report Podcast, where it's all Ole Miss all the time. Here's your host, Michael Borky. Well, the game is still going, but we're going to go ahead and go live anyway. Post-game show, Ole Miss dominates Furman as, you know, they're supposed to. That's kind of what the Scotland team should do against an FCS opponent. Hell, it's what an SEC team should do against an FCS opponent every single time they play, and Ole Miss did that. And as you guys know, if you listen to the radio show or you listen to me long enough, you know that when it comes to breaking down and talking about FCS games, the only thing that happens that should change your perception about your team is negative. Hey, Dad and I talk about this a lot uh, on the radio show. It's the only thing that you can take away from the FCS game that changes your season outlook is if it's bad. However, uh, when you're winning, what is it, 76 to nothing, good things did happen. So we'll talk about what we saw with the context, of course, being that it was Furman and get to your comments as well. Uh, I, let's keep in mind for this for, for the Saturday night post-game shows, I want to just keep it to the Ole Miss game. We'll talk about all the other stuff tomorrow. So so tomorrow night's live stream, we'll talk about all the other games. Vanderbilt getting a big win, that kind of stuff. We'll do all that tomorrow. Tonight, let's just focus on the Ole Miss game because this is the Ole Miss post-game show. And then we'll talk about everything else that happened in college football uh, tomorrow. But I'm glad you guys are here. Thank you for being here literally during the game. So if you're watching me, I thank you for that. My name, by the way, is Michael Borky. Don't forget to like the video, leave a comment, uh, and subscribe if you have not already. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast feed as well. Wherever you get them, just search Rebel Report and subscribe and leave a rating and a review. And the post-game show is presented by the Gregory Law Firm. Check them out, DJ Gregory of the Gregory Law Firm. If you have been personally injured, or you may have like a small business situation that you need legal advice or uh, a contract dispute. Check him out. DJ Gregory, the Gregory Law Firm. He's in Saltillo, Mississippi, but he can service you anywhere. Anywhere in Mississippi. Check him out. DJ Gregory, the Gregory Law Firm. 662-397-9799. 662-397-9799. Don't delay. Call DJ today, the Gregory Law Firm, for all of your personal injuries, small business or contract disputes. If you need legal advice, do not delay. Call DJ today. So we'll quickly go uh, through the box score some and then uh, talk about the game a little bit. And then I'll send you on your way because, again, the, the game's going on right now. It's 76 to nothing. A lot of college football going on that we'll talk about tomorrow. But Ole Miss currently, there is, what, eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Ole Miss leading Furman 76 to nothing. Jackson Dart on the day, 22 of 27 for four. 118 yards and five touchdowns. And again, the context is it's Furman. It is their FCS opponent. But the two, especially the deep balls that were touchdowns to Trey Harris and to Juice Wells, those were just beautifully thrown in timed footballs. Now, I'm sure it's a little bit easier to deliver a pass when you have good protection and it's Furman and there's very little pressure. However, the, the knock on Jackson Dart from, from some people has been the deep ball. Well, they were deep, deep passes, on time, inaccurate, in stride. And so, you know, that, that is noteworthy because people keep knocking him for his deep ball. He threw the football vertically, very comfortably, on time, and accurate with strength uh, tonight. So really good night for Jackson Dart. I couldn't help but wonder if there was a little bit of um, – I don't know if stat padding is the right word, uh, but I do think that they they slung the ball around a lot because they want to. I, it just kind of felt like they threw the, the the ball. And even though the pass run distribution wasn't that much, and so in the first quarter it was fourteen passes to ten runs, thirteen passes to eight runs. But part of me kind of wondered if uh, Lane really wants to 
um, you, you know, make sure that that Jackson has numbers that could lead him to getting an opportunity to go to New York. I don't know. Kind of felt like that was the case tonight, but uh, he was accurate. He was on point. Drove me nuts uh, late in the second half when they were winning by half a hundred, when they were still running designed quarterback runs. Uh, I, I, I cannot believe that they were doing stuff like that, but it was clear. I don't know if you guys noticed it, that um, they gave – Jackson a slide memo and he almost did it every time he only took like one true unnecessary hit uh, to me so he protected himself a little bit better than he did uh, a year ago but you've got it's hard to get that completely out of him and uh, he he showed that at least once tonight where he took a hit that he probably shouldn't have but he's a competitor that's what he does Austin Simmons came in now Walker Howard's in the game right now Austin Simmons uh, seven of 16 Uh, 111 yards and a touchdown. Uh, He should never throw a baseball again, in in my opinion. And I know that, you know, they should be able to do whatever they want. They're young, whatever. I think that he should never throw a a baseball again. Uh, Very clearly, in my opinion, I know it's Furman, but the natural arm strength is, but it's not just arm strength. It's strength is a, a term that gets thrown around too much for the ability that guys like, Austin Simmons have throwing the football. It's talent. It's not strength, which he's got that too. But overall arm talent, he is a natural, uh, just a a special athlete. And clearly it's just so – throwing the football is just so easy to him. And he looks like the future. And do you want the future being damaged or hindered in any way by a baseball season, whether it be because of injury, which happened this last baseball season, or just lack of – reps or or maybe wear and tear on that arm and I know you know it's a little bit different baseball and football I I understand all that but I think he should be done throwing baseballs I think that uh, that looked like a future looked like the future um, just the ability I know it's Furman but the throwing ability paired with the athleticism that that looked like the future I don't think you should throw a baseball anymore Receiving Trey Harris was Trey Harris, 180 yards on eight catches, a pair of touchdowns. Caden Lee, um, the, there's a reason that a, a lot of people talked about him this offseason. Four catches, 78 yards, and a touchdown. Caden Priestcorn had three for 77 and a touchdown. Juice Wells had two for 70 and a touchdown. He looks explosive. Uh, Ulysses Bentley had a, a trio of catches. Noriel White's been in the game at this point. He had a couple of catches for 34 yards. Aiden Williams got a couple of catches. I mean, Daquan Wright, the tight end, had a a touchdown reception. They threw the ball to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different receivers for Ole Miss caught passes uh, so far tonight. Running the football, Ole Miss had 244 rushing yards and four touchdowns at 6.6 per carry. Matt Jones has been the hero tonight for uh, for Ole Miss. Three rushes at least so far for 68 yards and a couple of touchdowns for uh, for Ole Miss. Um, if if you're looking for a, a negative uh, of any kind, I think that they. Uh, I mean, this is hard to do uh, for two reasons. One, I think that a lot of the offensive line issues early in the game were more about. Um, like a missed assignment as opposed to just like getting physically beat. And also um, two interior linemen, both of which play center, were out. So they were on what I assume is their third string center to begin with. And uh, there was at least one moment in the game where that led to Dart getting hit because of a miscommunication, not necessarily getting beat. So physically, uh, I'm not totally sure that, that it was as bad as some people said, but if you want to look for a negative tonight, offensive line was not perfect. Uh, There were, there were a couple of times where Dart was pressured. Uh, They didn't run the ball perfectly early in the game. Now, again, they ended up, I mean, what was the number? I just had it and I've got to pull it back up. I mean, again, they ran for 244 yards on almost seven yards per carry. So it's, it's hard to really like overly criticize, but it wasn't perfect. I think injuries had something to do with that. I think that there was some communication or, or uh, missed assignments that had something to do with that. And don't forget, this is a, a unit that we talked about that was banged up throughout camp. 
Diego Pounds uh, was either coming off of an injury or, or dealing with something. Both of the Washington transfers were not there for the start of camp. Uh, You've got two guys that at least one of which was expected to start. And a lot of people think that he might be their best lineman out for the game. So uh, there was a lot of moving parts, um, a lacking continuity, that kind of stuff. So maybe that was a factor as well. But if you're looking for a negative at all, that would be something that I would point to as it wasn't perfect. It wasn't bad. I think some of the reaction was overblown without applying context, but that's still something that I would look at as, eh, it wasn't perfect. And against Furman, you should probably look perfect. But still, again, 244, four touchdowns. Defensively, uh, the the defensive line looks what you, you thought it would look like. Walter Nolan, again, it's Furman, but Walter Nolan looks big, physical, and explosive. I mean, the, the entire defensive line basically lived in Furman's backfield all night, which is what they're supposed to do. But what I th- thought was most impressive is not necessarily how Nolan and Princely and, and Pegues had a really good night as well, um, h- how good they looked, because I'm going to keep saying this, it's Furman, but what the defensive line looks when they went to their twos and threes. And I don't necessarily mean, you know, having success against Furman. I mean physically what they look like. Cam Franklin looks like he is – like physically looks like he's been in a SEC strength and conditioning program for years. He looks like Princely does. And he's a true freshman. That's what was so impressive to me with this old Miss defense tonight is when they went to the twos and threes, nothing changed. The, the way they looked did not change. Furman didn't have start having a little bit more success. It was physically dominant at every level uh, on, on the defensive front, at every point of the game. We, when you have Nolan and Princely and Pegues and Ivy, and then you go to a Kalo Stone, and, and, and you go to uh, the, the freshmen that played tonight, all billion of them it seems like, but physically they all looked the part. Chris Paul, the, the linebacker, didn't start tonight, and he had eight tackles and two and a half tackles for loss. Um, so their, their non-starter linebacker at this point is somebody that has played a ton of college football at the SEC level and, and flashed, um, tonight. Jam Brown looks really, really good on the defensive line as well. Physically, uh, looks really good on the defensive line. I think that the, um, the, the addition of, of Trey Amos, you could see that physically, he looks and, and plays the part. It's Furman. Like I said at the beginning, there, there's only negative that you can take away from a game like this to change the outlook of the team. We thought this was a, a team that could compete for uh, an SEC championship, and they looked like that uh, tonight. We'll see a few weeks from now if that's reality, but you have to love the way they started the game. You have to love the way Jackson Dart threw the football, especially vertically. Uh, You have to really love physically the way they look on defense, but not just the starters. The twos and the threes look the exact same. The depth that they have on defense really stood out tonight physically. And, you know, running back is is definitely interesting. Uh, Barely uh, got to see uh, Amos tonight. Uh, he didn't play until uh, into the fourth quarter, I don't think. And the game's about to end, by the way, just a, a minute left. So I'm going to go ahead and um, close it down. And Lane's channeling his inner Saban right now. He's uh, he's angry, up 76 in the uh, in the fourth quarter. But uh, running back's a position that I'm really curious about. I mean, uh, Henry Parrish had eight carries. Uh, Dart had six carries. Bentley had six. Amos three, Jones three. Uh, so th- they didn't, you know, focus on running the football so much tonight. So what that rotation is going to look like or, or who's going to step up, we, we got no indication uh, of that tonight. But Princely's playing uh, physically looks absolutely fine. Juice Wells physically looks absolutely fine. They beat an FCS team 76 to nothing. It's just what they're supposed to do. But, but they looked like a team that they were supposed to look like tonight. So 
There you go. We'll get to your comments after I tell you that uh, the podcast is brought to you in part by Advantage Business Systems. Check them out online, absms.com. Advantage Business Systems has you covered for all of your office technology needs. If you are in the state of Mississippi, anywhere in the state of Mississippi, and you need office technology, copiers and printers, mail machines, cloud storage, data security, whatever it is, if it's tech in the office and your Mississippi business needs it, check them out. Advantage Business Systems, absms.com. Com. Podcast is also brought to you in part by Priority One Bank. Let them make you their priority. We've got 16 locations here in Mississippi, so there's likely one in your backyard. Bank with me. Switch today to Priority One Bank because they make you their priority every single day. First message, Mississippi greater than Florida. Yes, uh, Florida is a disaster, but we'll get to all that tomorrow. This is the first time you've ever felt bad for a football team. You know, I tweeted earlier, I was like, can we just be nice? I mean, come on, let's be nice. Look, I'm rocking my Furman shirt tonight, by the way. Um, but yeah, I kind of felt bad for him for uh, for a couple of points in the game. But here's why you shouldn't. Because Furman is a high-level academic institution, for one, so they're getting a great education uh, for free, a very expensive education for free, and they don't compromise academics for athletic admittance. So if if you got into Furman, you're, you're a really brilliant person. They're going to be fine in life, but also it's a top 10 FCS team. Like it's a really good football team. They understood what they were walking into. They're well aware of who Ole Miss is and, and what this game is for. They're going to be all right. They're a top 10 FCS team. They're going to win a bunch of football games. They've won 20 games in the last two years. They're, they're going to be fine. They're going to be just fine. I did have a moment of feeling bad, though. I, I hate watching my childhood team get their ass kicked the way that firm got their ass kicked tonight. But they're they're going to be fine. How much did Furman get paid for this game? It wasn't enough. So the FCS teams don't get paid like the million eight that you get from the G5 teams. But look, I, I know people hate these games. And I, I mean, there's no way you enjoyed watching that. I didn't enjoy watching that. Uh, but... Those games serve a very important purpose because programs like Furman need these buy games to exist in their current form. Um, some of these programs probably would fold. Uh, maybe not Furman, uh, but but some of these FCS schools cannot survive uh, without these buy games. They need these buy games. And so they serve a very important purpose because FCS football is very important. All of these teams give full scholarships to 63 young men. Um, and they play good ball on top of it, but th- that is the level in which, you know, the student athlete still really is the student athlete. You know, they, they send some guys to the pros. Furman has a handful of guys that have played uh, in the NFL and just sent a tight end uh, to the NFL recently. So, you know, they've, they've done it, but that level provides a service. Uh, they provide academic opportunity for young people, some of which would not be given that opportunity otherwise. So uh, these buy games are so important. I don't hate them the way other people do. (laughs) Dart for Heisman. Like I said before, I I think that, I think that Lane had that in the back of his mind when he was slinging the ball around uh, a little bit tonight. I, I really, I really do think that, but anyway. The one thing you learned about this game is that the defense is deep, no doubt. Dart could have thrown for 1,000 yards if they wanted him to, twelve or 1,300 if they wanted him to. Defense is absolutely stacked on the line. They need some help on the back end. There was a couple of early coverage busts. Uh, so two things on that. One good, one bad. The bad is coverage bust. You never want to see that because if Furman can exploit it, so can somebody else. However, that is something that you can clean up, right? That's a mental error. That's that's just a, a that's a screw up that can be corrected. It's not like Furman got them a couple of times in the first half by winning one on one matchups. You know what I mean? And it's kind of like the same thing that I noticed on the offensive line. It, it looked like there was they weren't winning one on one matchups as much as they were. Like, like Ole Miss was not picking up stunts or something correctly. Things that you can very clearly fix. 
U.S. Alabama is also trying to impress Caleb Cunningham. Yeah, but he was in Oxford tonight. This is supposed to be an FCS playoff team, not just a bad one. They won 10 games each of the last two seasons. Exactly. I had a friend text me and said, I thought you said Furman was good. My response was, they are. They are good. That is a storied program. It's a solid program. Uh, Hendricks has done a hell of a job. They will be a playoff team this year again. They're ranked in the preseason top 10. Um, They are. So... Yes, that's a good FCS team. Ole Miss is just a elite FBS team uh, that that wasn't Pine Bluff that they destroyed uh, tonight. That that's actually a good one. Checking out and going back to the game. Oh, I'm way behind on messages then because the game just ended. Lane looks like he would rather be anywhere else right now. I'm telling you, he channeled a little bit of his his inner Saban there, getting all pissed off about being up seventy six to zero. Surprised Austin went in before Walker. Yeah, I'm curious about that. I, I mean, it could be as simple as he's ahead right now, but it just could be that simple. And the way he throws the football, man, is he's got special arm talent. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Maybe they switch them next week. Um, I would be surprised and wrong, but I, I, I'm wrong. It, it happens because I've said all summer that I don't think they're going to give you a real indication of who's ahead in that battle and unless they absolutely have to. Um, but maybe they did it tonight. Or maybe Walker Howard will be the first guy to come in next week if they're beating down Middle Tennessee the way they're supposed to. They have quality depth at running back. I am curious to see what that looks like as the opponents get a little bit better, though. We did not get a good, a, a real good look at at running backs to tonight. Um, we didn't get a good look at him. Austin obviously needed more work. I th- we will know more about that next week. We'll know more about that next week. Um, and hey, guys, I, I'm not skipping over your messages. Uh, I promise. Uh, I appreciate you being here. I just I want to keep the post game show focused on the Ole Miss game, and we'll talk about all the other ones tomorrow. So if I'm skipping over you, it, it's not a Anything other than let's let's save all that for tomorrow night's live stream. It's 4.30 here in Germany. Well worth it not getting any sleep. Like and subscribe for Borky. Thanks, Anthony. Glad, uh, glad you're here, my friend. Glad that you are here. What's the one thing I saw tonight that I think they really need to work on? That's a good question. Um, it's, it's offensive line, but I, I do think some of that's going to be alleviated when they get like Jerquan Scott back. When they get both of those guys back, I think that will help some. But it it looked like it was communication and assignments on the offensive line, more so than physically not being good enough. That that would be – and, you know, we're doing this probably while Lane is speaking, so we'll get more uh, insight into what Kiffin saw. But uh, I do think that that was was the, the, the one downside tonight. Other than not getting a good look at running backs, but that that happens. Whatever. Uh, the the one downside tonight, I think, is is that that there were some blown assign. There was a couple of early blown assignments defensively in the secondary, and then it looked like there was some issues um, on the offensive line with assignments as well. That that would be the thing that you want to look closely at uh, between now and uh, Middle Tennessee is is if they're able to clean that up and if they're able to get a little bit healthier there. As uh, as well, you think Kiffin will be upset he didn't break eighty opportunity to do it at the end, and it didn't happen. Looks like you're guessing Walker Howard is off target. Kiffin looks upset. He definitely was upset. It definitely was after the game. He's a perfectionist, though. I mean, this is you know he he truly believes that this team has a championship ceiling, and he watched a coach. In Nick Saban, he coached for a coach that in games like this demanded perfection. And when he did not get it, it was a problem. And Lane Kiffin demands perfection, and he didn't get it tonight. And so it it, it kind of it reminded me of that. Now I'm not saying he is Nick Saban, but that that's the kind of that's the kind of mindset that it appears that he has now. 
Couldn't take anything away from that game besides Harris Dart 2024. That, you know, again, it's Furman. But the explosiveness that you saw from Harris and Wells and how reliable Caden Lee looked, and that was without Jordan Watkins, is why I spent so much time trying to remind people this offseason, you have one of, if not the best receiver room in college football. Like, you, you have that already. Uh, that's that's why I spent so much time this offseason talking about it. And you saw, albeit against Furman, why. Juice being healthy like that, you, you see what kind of a dynamic that he provides. I thought we already did bet on the passing to rushing uh, this year. If they blow games out, they will run the ball. If not, they will throw. They have, especially with tight end, in right, they, they were lining up uh, Daquan Wright in the slot a little bit early. Gosh, he's so big. Um, using multiple tight ends paired with the aforementioned receivers um, is just, it's a collection of weapons in totality that I don't think Ole Miss has ever had. And yes, that includes the team that had DK and AJ on it. I think that when you also loop in the the depth that receiver paired with what they've got in the tight end room, it's there. Matt Jones is RB3 for now. He looked really good. He looked really good. Well, that was fun. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Crazy question. Why is there a coin toss? Home team can't decide to kick or receive. Just thinking out loud with some brown water. Why is there a coin toss? Um, I, I don't know. I, it's just how they've always chosen to, to start the game. Who was my best first impression of the new players tonight? That's a really good question. Cam Franklin. Is that uh, – I'm only doing that because the the easy and obvious answer to me is Walter Nolan. Like, that's the obvious, right? But everybody was watching for Walter Nolan. And uh, it's Cam – I think Cam Franklin physically looked so impressive. And so having – a guy like him there, and yes, he's young, and, and there might be some growing pains and a learning curve as he's trying to figure out life in the SEC, but uh, he stood out to me the most as, I mean, you hear how much they like these freshman defensive linemen. Like, you, like you hear that and, and all that. There's a, there's a difference between hearing it and then seeing it. I was most surprised at how ready physically that he looked. So, the obvious answer is Nolan, but Cam Franklin is the one that I'm going to go with. I think Walker will go in next weekend. I kind of have a feeling that's how it's going to go down. Simmons is the second on the depth chart release pregame. There was no or. Um, yes, I, I did see that. I also am just going to take a wait and see approach with Lane Kiffin on depth charts. Just that he's never really taken them seriously. And so I, I'm not going to read too far into this one either but maybe it was like that for a reason matt jones might be their best back he looked really good tonight apparently like everybody loves him too so seeing him succeed like that is did you notice by the way how he missed his dunk and they they lowered the basketball goal for for his next dunk to make sure that he actually got it <laughs> you could see jackson door in the background saying lower it so he can actually um, oh, man. Walker needs to go ahead and transfer. You can't right now. And you, but, yeah, no, you can't right now. Mm-mm. And it, it, there's still plenty of time for him to possibly win that job. But there's no portal open at the moment anyway. Concerning to not see Hudson Wolf with all of his health battles. Good guy. Did he not play at all? Um, I'll be honest, I, once it really got, you know, what it was in the second half, I started kind of gravitating more towards A&M, Notre Dame, and, and other games. But secondary and O-line needs work. I think the secondary will be okay. Some of those snaps were... Yeah, and, you know, that that was third-string center. So that needs to be uh, be kept in mind. 
You agree early on offensive line was allowing some pressure. You think Lane just wanted to let Dart have throwing reps more than blowing this team out. I agree. I, I don't think that he came in like thinking, you know, screw Furman, let's blow him out. It was more about wanting to really just let Dart loose and had more rushing yards than they had total yards. Is that true? So Ole Miss had, let's see, 243 to Furman's 146 through the air and 39 on the ground. No, excuse me. 146 on. No, I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. 26 on the ground. I can't even read box scores. It's late. Forgive me. And I got to stay up and watch this Southern Miss game now, too. Southern Miss, Kentucky starting in like 20 minutes after 10 o'clock. Yeah, 26 rushing yards for my Paladins tonight. That's a tough one. Furman tied the day they scored seven points on us. Yeah, so Furman and Ole Miss have played once before tonight, and it was 1924, so 100 years ago, and Furman beat Ole Miss 7-2. to two. So basically, this was a revenge game. There were no giant red flags. That is all that can really be taken away from this. Are you crazy and thinking the O-line didn't do as bad as people thought? You're not crazy. You're not crazy. I think some of it was personnel. And some of it was some communication issues. And some of it was they didn't – all of those things can be true at once. Furman is a great team for having about 2,000 very high-quality undergrads who are serious about getting an education, not just a diploma. Yes, and don't forget also FCS teams have 20 – two fewer scholarships as well. So I, I don't know if you noticed it, but like the – and I, travel parties are smaller anyway, but the number of players that they have um, on the sidelines are, are – there's just fewer of them. There's there's 22 fewer scholarship players at the FCS level as, uh, as well. Eccles did well. I mean, the entire defensive line, we'll, we'll do winners and losers on, on the radio show on Monday, and the Ole Miss defensive line, I mean, all of it, Eccles, um, Jam Brown, Cam Franklin, obvi- I mean, Hardy uh, flashed tonight, the uh, Jacksonville State transfer, uh, Walter Nolan, you had uh, Stone had a tackle for a loss. Princely looked physically, you know, ready. It's, it's a deep and talented unit. Where was Ivy and Perkins? Ivy was a little quiet tonight, but I thought Perkins flashed a a couple of times. Uh, How many snaps? Can I find a snap count for Centarian Perkins? Uh, There's no snap count yet, but he did have that one pretty wicked hit over the middle. You don't think you could win 76 to nothing on the video game? Goodness, this receiving core is the best they've ever had. Yes, it is. Your first impression award would go to Pooh Paul. I've missed the linebackers getting TFLs for a long time. Yeah, me leaving him off was probably a mistake. He was impressive tonight. He, he was impressive tonight. Far too many high snaps. You've seen also figured you would have seen a few more forced fumbles. Yeah, I, I think the snap issue is going to work itself out when they get their actual centers back. Walter Nolan's a grown man, that's all. Yes, he is. Pupal impressed the most relative to what you expected. Princely impacted two games. He was obviously missing from the swamp. We'll get to that more tomorrow. If they will let Dart in. He may have broke 800 yards passing. So Miss is playing now already? Oh, shoot. Okay. Well, I've uh, I've got to get going soon. Trey Amos looked really good. Yeah, that he is a that 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 is an NFL corner. That's what he looks like. Um We'll see if he can continue this play as the competition gets better. But that's what he looked like. That's what he looked like tonight. Um, He looked like an NFL corner. He looked like what you're used to seeing at Alabama. Sure enough, he was at at Alabama previously. But need to see it against better competition. But, uh, man, he was – it's Furman. But but he was in the hip of every receiver he was covering. He's long, really athletic. He's impressive. Really, really impressive. So, yes, Ontarian Perkins did play tonight. Yes, he did. How would I grade Austin Simmons? 
Um, like an A minus. He had a couple of off target throws, but the the arm talent is there. The the deep ball is really really pretty. He should have had two touchdowns if not for a pass interference. And then, like two throws later or one throw later, a a, a drop uh, in the end zone. So something like an A minus. There's a couple of off target throws, but it's his first real game action, and the just the. When he throws the football, it's, it looks different. It looks different out of his hand than it does darts. It, it, he's he's got that man. Yeah, he he really really does. So anyway, uh, that's about all we'll do for uh, for the Furman game. To be honest with you guys, I appreciate you being here. Uh, we will be back live again tomorrow, eight o'clock. We'll just do a weekend recap, talk about all the other stuff uh, that we saw uh, around the SEC. So and, and college football as a whole. We'll just talk college football tomorrow. Thank you guys for being here for the post-game show. Uh, These, I promise, will be a little bit better as the games get better. But thank you for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow and do all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys again tomorrow at 8. See ya. A Super Talk Mississippi media production.